Hey, wine mermaids. This is the Peace, Love, and Wine Podcast, bringing you happy hour conversations with awesome women on self-care, sisterhood, and creative living to reduce stress and maximize joy. Life is short, so grab a glass and get ready to sip, sparkle, and make a splash. Make sure to visit peaceloveandwine.com and enter your email to receive VIP deals and get your free self-care download. Now, here's your wine sister hostess with the mostest, Tiffany Humfeld. Hello and welcome to the podcast, ladies. I am happy to have my friend Natalie Schlute on the podcast. She is the hostess of the Successful Soul podcast, which talks about mindset, business, and spirituality. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you, Tiffany. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I know. I'm glad we're trying round two. The first time we we tried to talk together over the, the Zoom internet, we had some challenges, but we'll link to that so that we can we can have your conversation with me and then we'll go the other way this time. <laughs> Definitely. So let's talk a little bit about before we were sort of going live here, we were talking about some of our challenges this year and sort of the fact that you, you know, life still keeps going as you were dealing with challenges. Um, I imagine a lot of the work you do, you call, you're, call yourself an intuitive mindset coach, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of that has to do with listening to your body, right? Listening to signs from the universe, I think is probably how you would you would describe it, right? And mm-hmm. tuning in. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, you know, I mostly work with female entrepreneurs like you do because... We're unique. Females are very different than males. We have a different energy. We have a different way of approaching life. Um, but even as you're manifesting an amazing business, an amazing life, you know, the relationship, the house, the things that you want in your external environment, we really have to stay in tune with what's going on with our internal environment too. Even when you get the things and reach the goals, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be any challenges. There's not going to be any setbacks. There's not going to be you know, it's life isn't always just perfect. I think the challenges are there for us to learn and grow from, you know, and I know we were talking a little bit before we turned on record um, about how we both had a, quite a few challenges this year. It's It's been a rough year. And I feel like the more women I talk to, everyone's kind of saying the same thing. We have different struggles, but either way, we, we all have challenges in our life. And I truly believe that Challenges are always going to be there. It's just how we show up for the challenges. And sometimes we need to push through. Other times we need to just be with it. And learning how to, I guess, just approach things with an open mind. And try to look at every situation from a different perspective. Um, I personally have had a lot of health challenges this year. And so I haven't been able to be in a a hustly flow with my business like I had anticipated 2019 being. And I've just had to accept that that's okay. That's okay to be where I am. I'm learning a lot about my health, my nutrition, how to take care of myself on a different level. And I haven't put as many hours into my work as I wish I could have. But now that I'm starting to come out on the other side of it, you know, we, we learn from this. And I think sometimes even health challenges, relationship challenges, family drama, you know, financial issues, all of it's there for a purpose for us to learn and grow. And for me, this was really a year of learning how to take care of myself, um, nutritionally, physically. And I have learned a lot and I have grown a lot in that, that realm. And I've still found a way to be taking baby steps in my business forward, (laughs) despite how many sick days I've had this year. So, you know, life is life. It's not always going to be perfect and sunshine and roses, Um, but it's okay. It's okay that it's not perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It wouldn't be the human experience if life was perfect every single day. (laughs) Yeah, it would probably be pretty boring. It would be very boring. You know, we came onto this planet because we wanted the, the human experience. And if everything was perfect, if every food on the table was our favorite food, it would be boring. There's supposed to be, you know, a, a variety of things to choose from so we can figure out what our likes and our dislikes are so that we can make better choices. We can find out what we want through what we experience that we don't want. And so looking at every experience of, gosh, I don't want my health to be like this anymore has spurred a whole new level of growth in what do I want my health to be like and how do I have to get it and finding the way to get there. And so challenges show us that, you know, we we realize, oh, maybe this isn't what I want anymore. Maybe I don't want to keep manifesting this. So 
even though it's hard and it takes time and energy and a lot of focus, what comes out on the other side is so much better because of the challenges we went through to get there. It's so much more rewarding and fulfilling um, and just brings more value in the lessons that we learn along the way. Mm -hmm. What are some of the lessons you think that you that have been reinforced in your life this year? Oh, this year, um, be careful who you listen to. <laughs> I guess it's a big one. Um, who, who are you listening to when you get your information? And for me, it, it actually came back to um, people that are following spirit, to be perfectly honest. I've, I've dealt with digestive issues, neurological issues, um, chronic pain, migraines for almost 20 years. And a lot of the things that I found online for how to heal yourself, I've tried every diet under the sun, not because I needed to lose weight, but because I was trying to heal myself. And come to find out a lot of the diets out there that promote, you know, healing of, you know, bacterial overgrowth in the gut or candida or all these different things were telling me the wrong information. They were telling me to cut out fruit. Um, you know, so many of these high fat diets, these high protein diets are just not good for your body. And I, I hit a point earlier this year, the beginning of the year, even a little bit at the end of last year, where I my health just started going downhill again. And I, I ended up finding medical medium. I don't know. We, we just talked about him. But if you're listening, if you've never heard of medical medium, his name is Anthony William and he channels spirit. And what he talks about is so above and beyond anything else I've ever heard when it comes to diet and nutrition and healing every ailment under the sun. And he, he talks about, you know, eating a lot more fruits and vegetables and the low fat diet is what helps to heal and support the liver. And so for me, it was years and years of trying to weed through all of this information, all these books that I've read, you know, trying to find the answers and it really came down to finding someone who I feel actually is saying something that resonates more true than anything that I've heard um, in the mainstream media with all these bad diets that are going on nowadays. So, um, so yeah. I think you have to find what works for you. You know, I think different mm -hmm. things work for different people. Um, oh, I agree 100% on that. Yeah. That's always been my motto, um, and particularly with diets, because everyone reacts so differently to things. Um, and he's not a one size fits all either. He talks about what the root cause is, you know, an overload of bacteria, viruses, heavy metals in the body, um, you know, pesticides, toxic chemicals, and things like that. And everyone has a completely different combination of any of those things. And so the foods that are going to heal me may be a little different than what will heal you, but we also have to find what works um, and what's going to target each of our, our weaknesses mm -hmm. in our health. Yeah. You mentioned that you're doing some other things besides the food that you're sort of revamping or not revamping, but sort of like recommitting to some things. In your life. Yes. Yeah. And um, as I was mentioning, uh, it's because my health kind of went downhill this year. I didn't have the mental capacity to keep up with all of my, I guess, rituals, you can say, um, or my practices. And, that was a little hard. It was tough because one of my symptoms is um, I get migraines. So the trigeminal nerve and the optic nerve in my face get very flared up, which means I have eye pain, I have face pain, and I was getting a lot of brain fog, which makes it very hard to sit down and do your mindset work, <laughs> to be reprogramming your mind and to sit there and meditate every day like I was before and do my visualizations. Like the pain was in my face. It was in my head. It was in my neck. And it was challenging. I had to take the time and just be like, I'm, I'm just going to lay here. I'm going to heal. I've just got to lay in bed and rest and take care of myself. And I'm now getting to a point where I'm getting the energy back. I'm able to focus a little bit more on my business again. And I'm recommitting to a lot of my practices, getting back to, you know, I meditated this morning. I've been doing a lot of visualization, going back to reprogramming my mind. It's, it's hard when you're in pain or when you've got these challenges going on in your life. It's so easy to be in it and just focus on that. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be challenging to pull yourself out of it and be like, everything's going to be okay. This is happening for a reason. There's some lesson I meant to learn here. I'm going to be better because of it. Sometimes you don't want to say those things when you're feeling like shit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so 
it's it's been a journey the last couple of weeks of finally getting back on track and i ha- i keep catching myself i keep catching the things that i'm saying in my mind that are negative or doubtful or feeling like you know this this crap is never going to end and just telling myself retraining myself over and over again it's going to be okay you are healing you are feeling better your business is going to start taking off again you are it just whatever whatever positive affirmations i can keep retelling myself um, and it's work, you know, it's work changing those habits because you get stuck in these patterns and, mm. and to pull yourself out, you, you do have to be committed to it, not only committed to yourself and your future, but your bigger goals and what you want. You know, you've got to get some leverage on yourself. And when, you know, it's, it's every day at a time, one minute at a time, one hour at a time of slowly retraining and you're still going to have some slums. I'm not going to say that every day has been perfect. Um, because it hasn't, and some days are better than others, right. but I do my best every day, and I try to get back on track and feeling better and better and doing all the inner work that I teach because it does work. It does work. Um, and you just have to ha- have some patience and some grace with yourself because every day is going to be different. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's so funny how we can give that grace to other people, and then we have a really hard time giving it to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We're so hard on ourselves sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I think having the support of other people and um, even having a coach, right, it can be one of the things that can be helpful to reframe your perspective and your mindset. Um, so can we talk a little bit about that and the work you do with other people? Yeah, I primarily um, do work through some group coaching inside my Step Into Your Power Academy where I train people on the ins and outs of all all these things that we've sort of been talking about today, um, reprogramming your mindset to think like a CEO, to shift how you think, how you feel, how to master manifesting things, and how to also follow your intuition. We do get caught up in our headspace a lot of the time, overanalyzing and, am I making the right decision? Oh, there's so many decisions to make in my business. I'm so overwhelmed. There's not enough time. We get in these cycles of all these things. Um, and we put so much pressure on ourselves. And so what I love to coach people with is how to become the best and greatest version of themselves. Because we all have this amazing divine power within us to create anything we want in life. We're all creators. We came to this planet to create. And we have this world of diversity in order to inspire us to create different things. Um, whether it's to create a better relationship with your husband, um, your spouse, your your children, you know, your parents, whether it's to create more financial abundance that you can give more or you can live a better quality life, whether it's creating better health for yourself so you can feel good and experience every day to the fullest. And so it's really all the ins and outs of how to make those shifts. You know, I wasn't raised (laughs) with perfect parents who taught me how to stop and take a step back and look at my emotions and analyze it and, you know, (laughs) and all these things. And Mm -hmm. so I think a lot of us, we just, those are skills that probably should be taught in school or by our parents. And they're not right. They're, they're basic. Like how do I, how do I approach life? (laughs) How do I step into the world and be mature about things, analyze things, from different perspectives, from different point of views? How do I make the best decision for myself, for everyone? How do I follow my intuition? Um, how do I allow myself to express my emotions, be in my emotions and know that it's okay to have every spectrum of emotion at any given time? These things are okay. And then learning how to consciously choose and shift, shift into a better space or shift into a space where you just allow yourself to be in that emotion. Because there are times where things shit hits the fan, right? Where someone passes away, where something really big and traumatic happens. And it's okay to be in that emotion at that time. It's not all about let's shift and like be happy when, you know, your best friend just passed away. No, it's, it's also giving your permission to just be, Mm -hmm. to just be with it and process it. And sometimes we don't give ourselves that permission. We think we have to be superwoman all the time. And that's, that's not what life is about. It's, it's about allowing ourselves to process and come out on the other side, you know, a new blossomed flower every season, <laughs> whatever that <laughs> looks like for you. Um, so, so yeah, I guess it's kind of a, not very specific on what I do, but more of an overview <laughs> of the influence that I have on people within my program. There's so many steps in between there. I love 
um, teaching people about quantum physics, the science behind manifestation, how our thoughts actually shift the cells in our body and shift the energy in you know quantum space and things like that. Because understanding the science behind manifestation has really helped me to be able to visualize it and picture it and know that it's not just this woo-woo stuff, like it's actually being proven and there are things that really do work. And learning, you know, lots of tips and tricks and practices for how to go about shifting your mindset. We can say we want to do something, you know, like New Year's comes around and everyone's got their New Year's resolutions. But why is it that 90 something percent of people that make a commitment on, you know, January 1st, fall back on it in 30 days or 90 days, Mm -hmm. and they just go back to their old routine. Things like that. There are ways to shift your habits and change your habits. Just deciding you're going to do something, but then not changing who you are on the level of your identity and who you believe you are. And um, there's so many tips and tricks to help you actually make permanent change in your life. And I think that's one of the, the hardest things. We go on autopilot where our subconscious mind is actually running our life. And if you never do anything to consciously shift and change, what your subconscious programming is, what your underlying identity is and who you believe you are, then you're going to keep getting the same results. You're going to keep making the same mistakes. You're going to keep living the same year, the same life over and over and over again. And you're going to feel like you're not getting anywhere. But there's so many... Raise your hand out there in podcast land if you can relate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny because that was me for so long too. I mean, I've always been one to do the inner work and I've loved personal growth for as long as I can remember. The very first book I ever read, I was just like, oh my God, there's there's personal growth books out there. It was this wild idea and I was so excited about it. And it's something that I've worked on for myself for 20 years. And so, you know, that's what inspired me to get trained in hypnotherapy, in NLP, neuro-linguistic programming, and get my life, uh, you know, coaching certification and do all of these other things to help me be really good at making permanent change and becoming the person I wanted to be. I, I was that emotional wreck. Like that was who I was, to be very perfectly honest. I was a girl who once or twice a month would have a total meltdown and be crying and just like, overwhelmed with life in the world. And I didn't want to be that way anymore. I wanted to enjoy life more. I wanted to take my life to the next level and stop struggling so much. And so that's where a lot of these, these trainings and these experiences and the personal growth and learning to follow my intuition and manifestation all came in for me was overcoming a lot of those obstacles. So if you're there, if you've been there, I get it. I've probably been through it all. <laughs> and I think that's why I love this because I've been through hell and back many times in all different forms. Um, and I enjoy helping people overcome those hard times. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned shifting and that you, there's specific things that you like to do. Do you have maybe one to three favorite ways to shift when you're, you're stuck kind of in a rut? Oh, you know, it changes depending on what kind of rut I'm in. <laughs> um, so sometimes it's as simple as turning on some music that shifts you into the energy that you want, right? So if you're, if I'm feeling really upset, anxiety overwhelms, I may need to put on some classical music or something that's going to calm me down, some, you know, ambient music and yeah, something like that. Other times I'm feeling sad or depressed or just getting in a rut and I need something upbeat. Like just turning on a song can be helpful. Um, other times I can tell it's my mind running. And so I'll sit down and I'll journal. I'll write out everything that I'm feeling. And it's almost as if the moment I just dump it onto the piece of paper, I get clarity. I step away from it and I see that these thoughts are just thoughts. They're not me. They're not who I am. They're not the essence of me. It's just thoughts that I'm thinking that are causing me to feel really crappy right now. (laughs) And so (laughs) by kind of journal dumping, I can gain some perspective and then start to reframe what I've been thinking and start writing some affirmations, writing how I want to feel, writing the truth behind it all. Because usually the positive is the truth, the negative thought that's coming up. That's not really what's going on in life. It's just a a choice of how you're thinking about life. And so that's a very simple way that I love to shift my mindset as well as just journaling and then reframing with some affirmations, reframing um, and how I want things to be. Those are two super, super quick ways. 
for reframing. Um, and then meditation. Meditation, I think I've had so much growth since I've started to be more consistent with meditating um, and retraining my energetic system. So as I meditate, learning to observe my mind, start to shift out of the mind, separate myself from that because your thoughts is not who you are. And then taking the time to feel the feelings that I want to feel in life. Feel so overwhelmed with love, so overwhelmed with compassion, so overwhelmed with connection to every human being on this planet, um, connection to everything in the universe, like finding these feelings of peace, of joy, of happiness, and taking that time in my meditation to just focus on that and to just feel it vibrating in every cell of my body. Practicing something as simple as that, whether it's five minutes, 15 minutes, or an hour a day, how, whatever you choose starts to shift and bleed through the rest of your day. You start to show up with that energy in other areas of your life. And then those areas of your life start to improve. So a consistent meditation practice is one of the most powerful things that I've done for myself um, in the big picture. Mm-hmm. And I think like research is showing that it's so powerful for so many different things too, including yeah. one of the most powerful things you can do for ADD. Mm-hmm. Yes. Part of read, you know, you know, because we're, we're, meditation is really just a practice in focusing, learning mm-hmm. how to focus your mind. Right. And brain pushups. <laughs> it's, yeah, there you go. Brain pushups. You know, we work out our bodies. <laughs> we need to work out our mind too. And I think a lot of people get frustrated. I know I did in the very beginning years ago when I attempted meditation practices, because you think you have these expectations, like the goal is to just be quiet, to like quiet your thoughts, but that's not really the goal. It's right. like every couple seconds that you go without a thought where you're just sensing and being present is like a rep. It's like doing Mm -hmm. one bicep curl, (laughs) you know, and eventually you can lift heavier, you can go longer. Um, But it's more about the practice itself, about the self-awareness, about being able to focus your mind. We live in this world nowadays, especially with computers and phones, where I mean, it's like instant reaction, instant gratification. We can't stay on a website page for more than two to three seconds. If it doesn't load, you jump off. Like that's the attention span nowadays. And it's just this nonstop chatter and go, go, go. And so meditation, it's all about training yourself to focus. You can focus on whatever you want to. You can focus on a tree. You can sit at the beach and just watch the waves and attempt to quiet your mind and just be with that energy. There's so many different ways you can meditate, but it's training your mind to focus. And I think that's something that's getting lost in this technology age that we have. And it's even more important now to focus on that because then you're able to be present. Right. You know, I, I, that's, I, that's really a big one. I think often... We're in social situations and you can tell someone's just thinking about what they're going to say next because their mind is just going, going, going instead of being there and listening, like genuinely listening to the person who's talking to you and being open to receiving, consciously thinking about what you're going to say next or how you want to respond, how you want to support them with your words that are coming next. Instead, it's just this constant like, we're just going, going, going and there's no awareness behind it. It's just reaction. We're living in this reactionary world instead of being intentional and taking that control for ourselves. Um, But yeah, I I, meditation has probably hundreds, if not millions of different benefits in so many different ways, um, depending on how you use it and what you want to do with it. And you have, don't you have a free meditation download for people who want to explore that? I do. Okay. <laughs> yes, I do have a couple. Um, if you go to my website, which is just natalieschlute.com, I have a, a section called freebies. And there's a free download library where I offer a couple different meditations. That's another great one. It's just listening to a meditation. So instead of just trying to be quiet or listening to something with no, um, no sound, no voiceover, I actually will guide you. I have a self-love one. And I want to say... I know I have another one, maybe a self-confidence that's free. I forget which two I put on the free download library. And both of those, I just guide you through some beautiful affirmations. There's music in the background so that you have something to focus on. You have something to think about to help you feel better by the end of it, to help you focus on the voice, focus on um, the music, and completely shift your state of being. 
And I wanted to talk a little bit about the intuitive side of things. And maybe, maybe even if, can you define what an intuitive business coach is and, and really what, how you view intuition? Yeah. Um, let's start with just intuition and what I believe intuition is. Because when you, when you have a, a definition and a, a visual for how intuition works, it becomes a lot more tangible. I think often people think intuitive means you're a psychic, you're something woo woo, <laughs> something mm-hmm. like that. Whereas how I see it is everything in existence is sitting in a field of energy, right? I mean, we are energetic beings. Every cell in our body is vibrating. Every thought has an energy connected to it. You can feel it. You know, for example, if two people are in a room and they just got into a really big fight and you walk into the door, before you even look at them, you can like feel the energy in the room, right? Like you can tell like something just went down. <laughs> and so... This is an example that's come up like recently in my life for some reason. Like, just oh, interesting. About that. Yeah. Yeah. And the opposite is true. You can walk into a room and you can feel the love that was just in that room. Um, you know, but everything, even the t- this chair you're sitting on, the table in front of you, the walls around you, everything has a vibratory energy. And even the space in the air, there's energy, right? We've got radio waves, we've got internet waves, where there's all kinds of things floating through the air. But we're just sitting in a field of energy. And I like to think of it as a fish in the ocean. Like if they're deep in the ocean and they've never come up for water, they don't need even know that air exists and they don't realize they're in the water because it's all that there is. Right. And that's how we are. We're sitting in energy, but we're so engulfed in energy that sometimes we forget that we're in energy. And so because of that, we are physically, energetically connected to everything in existence, right? Like Tiffany, you and I, we're connected. And there are times where sometimes we'll think about each other. And all of a sudden, one of us texts each other and we're like, oh my God, I was just thinking about you, <laughs> right? right. There's, an, there's an energetic connection between people and between objects and between things um, and between things that you want to manifest into your life. The, the difference is whether you are aware of it and you focus on it and you use that power to your, you know, your benefit and to create great things in your life or whether you get stuck in this three-dimensional reality where you believe that there is no energetic connection. And so your intuition is literally just the fact that you're already connected to everything and you have the ability to tap into that. And it just takes practice. As kids, kids are so intuitive. Like they, they're just naturally focusing on energy because they don't have language. They don't have words yet. So mm-hmm. everything is energy to them. They feel everything. You know, if you're a kid in a stroller and you're going down the street, you can feel the energy of every person, every adult that comes up to you and wants to like wave and like, oh, you're so cute. And the ones that have negative energy, you can see the, the kid's face and how they're just like, oh, I don't want to feel it. <laughs> Even though that, that adult is like smiling and laughing at them, they can feel that like the, the, the dark energy or the depression or whatever it is. And then they see another random adult. And they're like, oh, wow, I like their energy. And then they wave and they want to hug them. It's we naturally intuitively have this energetic connection. And I truly believe that over time, this intuitiveness becomes suppressed. You know, we are, if we throw a tantrum because we don't feel good when we're kids, our parents suppress us and they try to make us be quiet because we're in the middle of a grocery store and right. start to suppress our emotions, right? And we start to, instead of instinctively doing what our intuition is telling us to do. Oh, I want to go outside and play. Oh, I want to go do that. We have these intuitive nudges to to move in the right direction with what brings us joy, what brings us bliss, what's going to put us on the right path. But instead, our parents say, no, you can't go outside right now. You have to do your homework. You have to do this. We learn instead to listen to the adults around us, right. and learn to listen to language. We learn to put these filters on and become very analytical in, and we start to suppress and shut down our intuition. And so this is something that we can reignite within ourselves. We can learn how to let down all these thoughts, all these lies, all these mind chatter things that are holding us back from being intuitive because everyone has the ability. I, you know, I'm not any more special than you are. Like this is something we can all do is learn how to tap into that energetic field again. And so as an intuitive mindset coach, I teach people how to do that, how to un, you know unravel <laughs> some, mm-hmm. some of the stuff that's bogging us down. Um, and that's where the intuitive side comes from as an intuitive mindset coach. And the mindset work is really 
reframing the thoughts, um, shifting how we think, doing a lot of the neuro linguistic programming to shift your subconscious mind. Some of the hypnosis work is also really great for shifting the subconscious mind and stepping, you get to design and step into the person that you want to be. So figuring out what are your desires? What does bring you bliss? What would be, you know, if you lived in a perfect world, which is never going to be, but what, what would be the things you want to start drawing into your life more? What hobbies would you want to have? Where would you want to live? Where would you want to go? Who do you want to surround yourself by? And how do you want to feel with all of those things? Like what feeling comes up with all of those and retraining really yourself to be able to draw those into your life much more easily to create a better quality life for you and everyone that you touch because of that, because of just who you're being. And so that's really what I define intuitive mindset coaches. I, I teach people how to unveil their intuition and shift their mindset so that they can really create anything that they want in their business and their life, whether it's relationships, you know, anything you want to manifest health wise and otherwise. I think asking those questions is so powerful because I think a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to go there, right? We don't, we don't allow ourselves to think what if because whenever we're stuck in the muck it's like it feels like that's the only thing that is and mm -hmm. so um, it's can be easy to accept that that's oh well, this is just the way it is this is life you know rather than go well wait a minute maybe i'm not looking at this correctly or maybe it's life right now but how could i create a different future mm -hmm. and um yeah, I think all those questions that you asked a minute ago, those are all great ideas to uh, journal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's really like step one, actually. <laughs> like when I go through, anyone who goes through my Step Into Your Power Academy, like the beginning is, I teach you a lot about the science and so you have a good foundation of how all of this works. But then you sit and you journal. You journal for a while on every area of your life, getting super clear. Sometimes we don't let ourselves dream <laughs> big enough. You know, we don't give ourselves permission to want something more. You can be happy where you are. You can love the present moment and you can still have some bigger dreams. Um, and like you mentioned, I think one of the biggest reasons that I feel people get stuck is it's so easy to look at your current circumstances. It's so easy to look at what's around you. Oh, this is how much I have in my bank account. See, this is where I'm at. This is only what's possible. Or this is how I feel today. I have this chronic pain. This is just how life is. This is, I'm supposed to live in pain. You know, we see what's immediate, but what we don't realize is that we can keep putting these energetic deposits, these choices, these actions, these thoughts, these intentions into our bank account. And within time, things will start to change for the better. And it takes time. And if it's possible for someone else, it's possible for you. There are people in this world doing amazing things, feeling amazing, having wonderful relationships, making, you know, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, and giving to charities and creating charities for third world countries. Like there's so many wonderful things that are possible in this world. And if it's possible for anyone else, you just have to find one example, then it's possible for you too. You mm -hmm. just have to make the choice and start moving towards it. Mm -hmm. Yep, that, and that can be the that can be the hardest part sometimes, right? <laughs> making that decision and then taking the first step, right? And then or continuing the steps that you know will get you there when things get hard. Yeah, staying the same is easy. We're really good. We're so good at staying the same. Like that's how your subconscious mind is built to keep you just functioning and running on autopilot. That's why it's so hard to change, make a new habit, a New Year's resolution, or shift your life in a totally different direction. It's because it's just, we're built to stay the same. So if you want something different, it, you're going to have to get outside your comfort zone. It's not going to be comfortable for a while. You are going to have to kind of push yourself and create new habits and make new choices and you become a new person from the inside out in order to get what you want, in order to become that great, greater, grander version of yourself than you are right now. You're still perfect where you are right now, but this world is in this experience, this human experience is all about expansion. It's all about growing, evolving, and changing. And so if we're not growing, evolving, and changing, at some point we start to feel stuck. Mm -hmm. Like there's something that wants to like be birthed out of us and we're not letting it happen because it's just so easy to stay the same. But then right. we feel dissatisfied and we wonder why, <laughs> you know? 
Mm-hmm. Well, do you have any uh, parting words for the ladies who might be listening today who maybe somebody's been going through something that's really rough? Um, any words of inspiration or hope you can offer? You know, life, the human experience is just, there's always going to be up and downs, ups and downs. It's, it's just part of it. But if you can get at least one lesson and evolve from every hardship that you have, it's all worth it. You know, I always, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how dark things are, there's, there's always something better on the other side. And it's always going to help you to move forward in some way. You already have the power within you to create anything that you want in life, to feel good, to, to be an amazing human being. You already are all of those wonderful things. You just have to allow yourself to be. <laughs> really, that's all it is. It's just allowing it. Um, and sometimes we're, we're so hard on ourselves. <laughs> um, but just be aware of it. I mean, awareness is really where it starts. Just do a little bit of self-reflection and know that you can make anything happen that you choose in life. Um, and so, you know, not the only thing that isn't possible is whatever you choose to believe isn't possible for you or for anyone, for your life, for your family, for your friends, for your business. Um, and so I, I believe in everyone. I believe everyone can create anything that they choose to create. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I think that's a good place to leave it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I had fun and I hope we get to do this again. Yeah, thank you so much, Tiffany. It's been so wonderful being here with you. I love you so much. And I'm I'm very grateful for you you interviewing with me today. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Love you too. This is a public service announcement from Peace, Love, and Wine. Hey, Mermaid, are you feeling calm AF? If not, I have a solution for you. And it's free. Go to peaceloveandwine.com and grab your free self-care download by entering your name into the pop-up. Or just go to the show notes and grab your Calm AF link there into your email and we'll get you on your way to feeling good. Oh yeah.